the vast majority of programmes that have been about pedigree dogs, other than the Crufts programmes, because the Kennel Club monitor that very, very carefully, the vast majority really do not give pedigree dogs particularly a fair crack of, crack of, crack of the whip. And you get the impression that all pedigree dogs, there's something wrong with them. You talk to vets, they think that there's something wrong with all pedigree dogs because that's what they're taught in vet school. And the whole thing motors on and rolls on. And there's no opportunity to, to say, actually, all this is rubbish. The vast majority of champions are fantastic animals. They really are. You don't become a champion in this country, at least, unless you've got a very good dog. Now if you've got a dog that's of excellent breed type it will also almost certainly be sound as well. So if you're breeding a dog of good type, you're breeding a dog that's sound, the likelihood of you also breeding in long-term genetic problems is relatively remote. One of the criticisms of the show ring is that it's very difficult to actually judge the whole dog um, on a few minutes trotting around a ring. It, it surely is a valid criticism. No, I don't think so. Um, generally, dogs in the show ring get about two minutes. Um, it takes a man one seventh of a second to look at a woman to decide whether or not she's attractive. That's, that's true. What you've got to remember is that the scientific version of, of what is right and what is wrong does change over, year, over, year, over time. And if you sign up to, say, the Convention on Pet, uh, Pet Animals, I mean, it is basically a perfectly, it sounds a perfectly reasonable document. But when you look at it, it's put together not by anybody that knows anything about breeding for quality. It's put together about people who are only interested in breeding for um, physical perfection. You mean for and health? They're, no, no, that's, I, I, I don't, don't quite agree with saying health because they're veterinary surgeons, they've been brought up in a, with a particular mindset and for instance on a list of breeds that would eventually be prescribed um, under the Convention of Pet Animals was my own. And a healthier breed you could not imagine. What breed is that? It's called the Finnish Spitz. But there is, they do have a, a problem with their liver and they've got a little bit, they sometimes fit, but it is statistically so small, it's smaller, it's, the, the statistics are such that the, the um, likelihood is smaller than in any normal human baby. The quality of the dog in Finland in terms of its ability to scent, to hunt and its style has actually diminished because they're paranoid about avoiding these particular difficulties. The likelihood of them getting is quite small but as soon as they've got one they go back 25 generations and won't use any of those dogs and what they've got left are not very good animals. So they've sacrificed time for health? Perhaps. Well, you know, that, that's good. You, Using a very extreme um, sentiment there, you don't have to sacrifice type for health. If you've got use your common sense, if you are prepared to um, be careful, you don't have. You can have both. I mean, we in, in this country, we I think we must have bred probably 150 dogs. Of those, I think two have fitted, and I think one died of a liver problem. It's a tiny proportion, and. We look at those and we think, well, probably won't use that dog with that bitch now. And that's all you need to do. But if you say, well, we won't use that family, then immediately you're restricting the, 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 the stud dogs and the brood bitches you can use to those that quite likely do, are not very good quality. When there's no health requirements to enter the show ring, isn't there a danger that a dog could become a very big champion while hiding knowingly or unknowingly um, a, a serious condition? That, well, that is possible. But there's, is there mandatory health checks for you? Is, are there for me? No, we use our common sense. I mean, one example is, is, is obviously yeah. that, that one crafts. Um, how could a dog that has a known inherited problem, eye problem, be awarded best in show? Because the dog itself is fantastic. It's just a beautiful dog. I mean, 
I've I've spoken today with um, a, a, a gentleman who used to be chairman of the Kennel Club, a friend of mine called Leonard Pagliera, and he can't see. But he came today, he's had a lovely time, he's very pleased to come, and he, he's been able to see earlier on, you know, I mean, he's not, he's not always been blind, he's nearly blind now, but he's still got a good quality of life, it, and he's a very gentlemanly, upright, 85 year old, I mean, he's quite elderly, but he's still leading a good life, and he's a perfectly good life. Does it, does it, I mean, a lot of people from the outside, I'm going to push you a bit on that, because a lot of people from the outside would say, that actually, that's ridiculous. That a, a dog that is, I know, known as the blind dog, could win the best in show. Well, have you heard of a man called Stephen Hawking? I mean, here's a man who's made a huge contribution to human understanding and knowledge, and he can only just move a move a finger. But he's not going to father the next generation. No, no, he's not. So, do we do we stop doing it because one, you know, a famous dog is blind? No, we don't. One of the breeds that we're looking at is Cavalier King Charles, um, mm -hmm. and um, one of the things that saddened me, I think, was that there is a breeding pro protocol for Cavaliers, which is des designed to try and rid the disease, uh, rid them of early onset mitral yes. valve disease, yeah. and that it requires breeders to hold off until it the does. dogs are two and a half. Mm. Fantastic initiative. I would yes. love to see it adopted by all breeders. But unfortunately, a tiny percentage of breeders are actually adhering to the protocol here and abroad. Mm -hmm. um, is that not a pri I mean, that saddens me. They could rid it in three generations. But be and if the Kennel Club just said, we won't actually let you, let you register puppies if the bitch is younger than two and a half, it could sort that problem in three generations. Wouldn't that be a good thing? Well, it does sound so on the surface, but almost all these sorts of initiatives have knock-on effects very often that you can't predict. Putting in a lot of rules and regulations in the long term will make a mistake. They're a very popular breed. By and large, they're quite healthy. Well, by and large, they're very healthy as a breed. Well, Cavaliers? Oh, they're lovely. You've seen them going around here? Instances of Mitral Valve Disorder and Siren Gomaelia, they think up to 40% of the breed. But it doesn't show. No. Ha, 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 ha.